Welcome biologists to this session where we're going to be looking at specialised exchange surfaces, in particular surface area to volume ratio. Now with this specification point they like giving you this experiment here where we use agar gel and within this agar gel we have an indicator that detects alkali, it turns purple when it goes in alkali. So with this particular investigation you normally ask to cut these cubes to certain different dimensions of varying sizes and then you're asked to place them inside an alkali usually sodium hydroxide for a certain length of time and after that time you can then cut these cubes open and you can have a look at how far the alkali is diffused into these cubes and to have a look at how the surface area to volume ratio has impacted upon this diffusion distance now before you actually do this practical you then need to work out first of all what the surface area to volume ratio is of these different cubes so if i have a look at my first cube here if it's one millimeter on every side um to work out the surface area i do my length times my height times the number of sides that i have so i have six sides to my cube so here i do one times one times six and so on and so forth for the rest of these results for the volume i would do the length and times the height times the depth so in this case one times one times one which is one and then so on and so forth now to work out your surface area to volume ratio i'm literally going to be taking my numbers here surface area to volume and then putting them into a ratio so six to one in my second one i'll be doing 24 to eight however in your exam what they really like you to do is they like you to make your ratios comparable at the moment these aren't comparable because i've got six to one and 24 to eight so ideally i need to be converting this ratio here so i have something to one now in order to do that i'm going to be doing 24 divided by eight so then therefore i'll get the ratio of three to one so 24 goes into eight three times so i've got three to one same principle here for the third and the fourth cube in that I would do 54 to 27, which if I divide 54 by 27 gives me two. So got the ratio two for one. And in the last one here, 96 to 64, if I divide 96 by 64, this gives me 1.5 to one. So they really like you doing this in the exam. It's well worth paying attention to that fact and trying your best to make sure all your ratios are something to one by dividing one part of your ratio to the other. Now, as you can see in this pattern here, as the, the size of my cube increases, the surface area to volume ratio actually decreases. And this is really, really important. You need to be able to apply this to organisms. So the larger the organism, such as a multicellular human, the smaller the surface area to volume ratio. Whereas something like a bacteria or an amoeba that's single celled would actually have a very high surface area to volume ratio. So let's go back to our cubes. After two minutes of these cubes being in my sodium hydroxide, I would take them out. What you then need to do is cut them in half to see how far the alkali has diffused into the cube. Now, as you can see in the small cube, it's diffused all the way through. In the middle sized cube, it's gone most of the way, but then in the larger sized cube, it's only gone part of the way through. Now, obviously you've measured this with a ruler and use data to analyze this, but this is just a picture to show you the differences between these different cubes. Now, there are a couple of things wrong with this investigation, limitations that we have to put on our results. First thing is that there's in, there is going to be inconsistency with the surface area. You're cutting this, these cubes with a scalpel, so it's gonna be very hard to get all those cubes exactly the same length on every side uh, also the results are very subjective it's up to you to decide how far that purple pigment has gone in which may differ to someone else who's looking at the same cubes so it's well worth paying these uh, to attention and i have seen these on mark schemes so very lastly we need to apply what we've learned here to organisms so as i mentioned before a multicellular organism such as ourselves such as a human has a small surface area to volume ratio therefore we need specialized gas exchange systems in order to transport and exchange gases and the reason for this is that oxygen cannot diffuse through our skin quick enough because there's a long diffusion dis distance to meet our metabolic needs we also have a much higher metabolic activity so there we have it Good luck with your exams.